It hurts to set you free, but you'll never follow me. The end of laughter and soft lies, the end of nights we tried to die. This is Masterpiece Reviews. I'm your host, Nick Freed, and this is The Doors, self-titled debut. The year was 1966. A ragtag group of musicians from Southern California had come together the previous year to form a new sort of psychedelic rock group. The Doors, as they called themselves, began playing regularly around Los Angeles, and specifically at the club London Fog. After playing at London Fog for several months, the band moved up to playing the famous Whiskey A Go-Go on the Sunset Strip. They became the Whiskey's house band, and eventually caught the eye of Electra Records president Jack Holzman, and together with producer Paul Rothschild, signed the Doors to a record contract. Shortly after signing, the band entered Sunset Sound Studios to record their debut album. The band had used their time at London Fog to play and mold, many times to empty houses, a set of songs that combined rock, jazz, blues, and folk. These tracks often came together after extended improvising and jam sessions. The electric lead singer Jim Morrison would improvise lyrics on stage that made their way into songs for an urgent and immediate sound. The band took only a week to record their 11-track debut, an album that would introduce listeners to a new poetic style of rock, an album full of psychedelic swirls and exploration, an album that would start the band on a collision course with fame, and leave an indelible print on music for years to come. That album, The Doors. Back when I was a burgeoning little revolutionary, say around 15 or 16 years old, I asked for one album for Christmas, and it was The Doors' greatest hits. I got that gift, and for the next few years I drowned myself in the band, read Jim Morrison's poetry books, watched documentaries, bought t-shirts, the whole works. This album in particular was on heavy rotation in my young, THC-addled mind, and I couldn't get enough. I can only imagine what it would have been like to hear the music on this album for the first time in the mid to late 60s, because when I heard it in the early such and such time period, it completely melted down what I was used to. Now, let's talk about music. The album opens with a bossa nova shuffle from drummer John Densmore that is then paired with a chugging melody line from keyboardist Ray Manzarek and guitarist Robbie Krieger. Then the powerful voice of Jim Morrison slinks in like a snake through the darkness to guide you to the other side on Break On Through to the Other Side. Morrison's intensity builds and builds, pulling his musicians to the closing apex of this quick two and a half minute song. You know the day destroys the night, night divides the day, try to run, try to hide, break on through to the other side, break on then, Manzarek leads us with a 50s doo style keyboard intro into the twisted soul kitchen. Morrison slurs and spits lyrics that invoke a late drunken night love story. The band is coded in reverb as Krieger and Manzarek trade off somewhat atonal solos to instill a kind of off-kilter fear vibe in the listener underneath Morrison's wails. The track's upbeat tempo stands in stark contrast to the dark creeping of Follower the Crystal Ship, a haunting, lovesick dirge that climbs to a crescendo that seemingly never resolves to keep you on your heels. I love Jim Morrison as a frontman, and I think he should go down as one of the best fronters in music. However, there's always something a little... Uh, kind of slimy about his demeanor on many tracks in The Doors' oeuvre, and especially on this album. I always Im just imagine him sort of arms akimbo, moving with equal parts fluidity and glitch, slowly walking towards me in a blank darkness. Even on more up-tempo tracks like 20th Century Fox and the Howling Wolf cover Backdoor Man, I feel like Morrison has come to steal me away with his vampiric mind tricks. Manzarek's circus-like organ on tracks like I Looked at You and Take It As It Comes 
don't really help matters. Nothing is scarier than a demented carnival. Damn clowns and sideshows. Gotta ruin the tilt-a-whirl for everyone. And I didn't even take that many psychedelics. Ugh. Ooh, but speaking of circus organ, let's get to the hits, like Alabama song, Whiskey Bar. Morrison puts on his top hat and grabby hands to haunt the midnight midway for Alabama Song, a pulsating and shifting track that rolls straight from the tense to the insanity of late night reverie. The verses careen back and forth with Morrison as he hunts for drinks and girls, and then leads him to a sweeping dance hall chorus sing along. Well, show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Things get more grounded for the band's biggest hit, Light My Fire. I don't really know how much more I can say about Light My Fire that you don't already know. I mean, from the Ed Sullivan Show controversy to the classic rock mainstay status, all has been discussed and dissected for years. If you don't know the story, then do a little quick Goog session and watch the Oliver Stone biopic. It's all there. I'm personally more interested in the downright terrifying closer, The End. No track on the album encapsulates Morrison and the Doors better than the nearly 12-minute epic of The End. Morrison originally wrote the song about a breakup, but over their multiple nights at London Fog and the Whiskey, the track evolved into a pseudo-Oedipal freakout that terrifies and unsettles. Morrison chanting kill, kill, and fuck under Dinsmore's explosive drums before releasing into a post-coital haze to close out the track and album is something you can't just walk away from. This is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend, the end. It really makes you kind of take a moment to reconstitute yourself afterward. And its involvement in Apocalypse Now doesn't really help. In the end, you see, see what I did there? The song is called The End. Anyway, this debut self-titled album becomes the perfect introduction to the band and set them on a path to success that would eventually claim Morrison's own sanity and life in a bathtub in Paris. But not before changing rock music for all time and putting psychedelia into the mainstream. A true rock masterpiece. This has been Masterpiece Reviews. I am, as always, your host, Nick Freed. Thank you so much for watching. Please keep all of your comments coming. Let us know what albums you would like to see us cover here on Masterpiece. Perhaps some albums by, I don't know, females. You guys aren't giving me a lot of female bands. Give me the female bands, and we will cover them here on the show. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then. <laughs>